Jamie Cummings. Hey. Yeah. Cheer up yourself. I like it. All right. So y'all must have been to Texas, right? You've been to Texas, yes. Ed? Oh, yeah. So, well, Texas is known for so many awesome things, uh, but I want to tell you about a place you might not have heard of quite yet. It's a brightly colored popular coffee shop called La La Land Kind Cafe. Sure, they serve tasty cappuccinos, but their main goal is to create jobs and opportunities for kids aging out of the foster care system. Here's a peek behind the scenes. I think the cafe is popular on Instagram and social media because it's got cool colors, some cool sayings here and there. Retro truck parked in front or our all yellow cup. It's a really nice atmosphere where they feel some sort of kindness coming when they walk through the doors and obviously some pretty cool coffee. We hire foster youth who are aging out of the system. So when they turn 18, we want to present the place that not only provides love and care for them, but a job that can actually turn into a possible career. Even when they leave and chase their dreams, we want to be here for them forever. So they're really always a part of the La La Land family. We're trying to prove that kindness should be the standard in business. We should all be doing this. We should all be helping our society. So we prove a new business model where we can be kind and be a business that runs in today's society. All right. Well, we actually have the owner of La La Land Kind Cafe dialing in right now. He's what I like to call a rad human, y'all. All right, everybody. Let's say hi to Francois Rehani. How are you doing? Francois. I like how you say it, Francois. <laughs> yeah, it was very nice. So, Francois, how did you become so passionate about helping foster kids? I grew up in Mexico where there isn't a real foster care system. And when I moved here when I was 12, I never knew there was an actual problem here. So I went about my life. I started actually doing restaurants when I was really young. And while I was doing those restaurants, I ended up at a kind of seminar or a, a workshop about foster youth who are aging out of the system. And that was the first time I'd ever heard anything about it. And basically, I, you know, I heard three stories. Each story was worse than the first and the second one. And each one really sounded like a horror movie to me. And so at the end of those three stories, you know, you think about an 18-year-old kid who has went through their entire life alone, maybe lived in 13, 15 different homes, without any real love or care. And then when they turn 18, we basically leave them on the street. So for me, that was a, a huge shock. Mm -hmm. And the more that I dove into looking into what's happening, uh, the, the worse and the deeper the, the dark hole got. Um, so Francois, what sparked the idea of a coffee shop? Yeah, so for us, we first wanted to create, you know, the question was where, what's the perfect business model for us to be able to hire foster youth who are aging out of the system? And we chose coffee mainly because number one, it's a really happy environment. And number two, it's a, it's a growing uh, career path, right? Being a barista is not only really cool and youth want to, want to achieve that, but it's also something that you can grow in and work on as a career. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, have you guys ever had the opportunity to mentor a young person? Every good teacher mm -hmm. is undoubtedly usually older than you. And he, I call that a mentor, mm, and yeah. especially if they single you out and, and concentrate on you, that's mentoring. That's, mm -hmm. all, it, that's all it takes. And, and every good director, he's teaching you as he's directing you. Mm. So I've, I've benefited from a lot of mentors in my life. Yeah, I do. And a lot I only with hope that I could someday repay them. Aww. Yeah, I bet you have. I think people don't always know that. You're someone's mentor. They just, there are always eyes on you. Yeah. Yeah. I do it a lot with female comedians, you know, um, because I really just was looking essentially for a mom when I got into, into yeah. comedy. But there were so many comedians that were really just kind of about to break before the pandemic. And then the touring business just kind of went away. People that relied on those checks every weekend on those yeah. shows. So I've had a lot of female comedians uh, staying at my house. But yeah, now more than ever, we really just got to stick together and lift each other up however we can. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you say that the cafe represents a bigger message. Um, so what is the bigger message with your cafe? Yeah, you know, we, we love all the admiration and love we get, and, and we think it's awesome. But at the same time, we think that one of the biggest problems is that people see what we're doing as amazing. Mm. And that's because I think the standard is very low right now, right? So our goal in the next five or 10 years is to make giving back and caring about our community 
normal, right? Like since when mm -hmm. have we gotten to a point that hiring foster youth who need our help, they're our responsibility. Since when has that become outstanding, mm -hmm. right? So hopefully we're, as we're creating a new business model where we're kind of expected to give back mm -hmm. as more businesses open it and copy us or replicate what we're doing and help some sort of uh, cause or way that in five or 10 years from now, it, it starts to become, you know, the norm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely normalized other things. Why don't we normalize some positivity? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. That's, it's such years. a great message. This coffee shop not only provides jobs for kids who've aged out of the foster system, it gives them self-confidence and the sense of family. We have two of the employees on the line right now. Please say hello to Jay and Sierra. How y'all doing? Good. Yes. Uh, well, Jay and Sierra, so tell us about growing up in foster care. And let's start with you, Jay. All right. Um, I was in foster care. I got placed in foster care when I was five. I was taken from my mom. Mm. And that was for about two years. And I spent like the last 10 years bouncing from home to home. Um, mm. You know, the foster moms, uh, they tried to connect with me, but like it was really hard for me to get um, welcoming and hope, like I had a really hard time trusting them. Um, so that didn't work out so much. And then, um, now I'm 19 and I aged out. So yeah. Yeah. Sierra, what about you? Well, uh, <laughs> The first 12 years of my life, I spent shuffling um, between my grandparents and neighbors. Um, it was really unstable and everybody was in and out of prison. I had entered the foster care system whenever I was 15 and I was with my first foster family. And eventually I just ended up running away and living on my own and doing jobs underneath the table just to survive. Good gosh. I mean, that is very hard for a mama to sit here and listen to that. Um, I, I can't imagine having to live it. Um, you're little warriors. I mean, what drew you into working at the cafe? How did you hear about it? Why did you want to join this family? So um, first I had a friend who worked there and she was telling me, you know, come out and see it. And at the moment I didn't have a job. I was like homeless. So I was just like, you know what, I'll give it a try. Um, from the moment that I walked in there, I noticed that they were promoting kindness and they were just, this big family atmosphere and it was very welcoming and I knew that they cared and honestly it felt like my prayers have been answered. Oh wow, so Jay, what drew you in? Uh, actually, uh, a couple of people mentioned, to, mentioned it to me um, and so I was like, you know what, I'll go and check it out and I went in, I talked, I was like, hey, are you guys hiring? And then they were like, yeah, and then I met Francois and he was just like so outgoing, so bubbly, so kind. And I was like, you know what? I don't even know if this is the dream or whatever, but like, I've got to work here. And then he turned around and he's like, you're hired. I'm like, goal. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my God. So how has working there impacted each of you? Like, I mean, just this has to, have, it had to have changed your life, right? Sierra, I'll start with you. Uh, well, first, they just started, you know, um, they, they, they've helped me to develop skills, uh, personal skills, coping skills, uh, interaction skills in general that nobody really spent time uh, doing that with me. And then also, I grew a lot in the company. And after mastering all the positions, I had gotten a promotion to being a shift lead. Yes! And now my most important promotion is uh, being a corporate trainer. Wow, oh my you better get it, <laughs> climbing that ladder, okay. That's awesome. Well, Jay, how about you? Uh, this like company has just impacted me. It's like, I've never felt so belong somewhere. Mm. Um, they just taught me that like, it's much better as working as a team than alone by yourself. Mm. They're very welcoming, just been homey for me. Mm. I mean, and it's you say it as in like, you keep using the word just, but that's a magical thing for a lot of people around the world that did not grow up in a family environment or what that should have been and felt like. So I can't imagine that shift in your heart and your soul, you know, and that potential is there that, that you are deserving. You start seeing like, I deserve this, like, and I can be this for someone. It's a really beautiful thing. And I think, and you know, we've all been sitting here talking about in such a 
often dark time mm. and there's a lot of daunting things and you know happening in our world and around us especially in this nation it's really beautiful to see such light and it makes me think if they're the future of our country we're going to be okay we're going to be fine we're going to be fine yes, yes. we're going to be just fine <laughs> so i mean jay and sarah is there something you'd like to say to francois because i wish i could hug him like he's like such a beautiful soul to start this whole thing like is there anything y'all want to say sarah you want to start Honestly, just thank you so much for putting your heart into the, oh, I'm sorry, uh, into the foster youth who have nobody and just giving it your all and making us your family. And you are really making a difference. And thank you for that. Wow. I love Sierra. <laughs> and I'll say that Sierra is really one of the most amazing and bright and happy and optimistic human beings I've ever met in my entire life. She literally makes me better. She makes our whole company better. And, and these two girls really resemble anything that we would ever want out of La La Land as a company and, and a mission, right? Yeah. Well, Jay, you want to you wanna say something? Yeah. Honestly, like I've always said, it's not really words that I can put into it of how much uh, I want to thank you, Francois. Uh, I try to do my best to let my actions show you that like you mean so much to me. You've brought hope back into my life. You brought a, a purpose back into my life. And I now kind of know like, okay, this is what I want in life and this is where I'm going for. And if it wasn't for you, I don't think I would be here. And like saying thank you to me is an understatement. And so I just really hope that I can show you um, how much you've impacted me and um, helped me come to where I am now. Yes. I love that. I love you guys. And you guys have done it on your own. It, it wasn't me. You, you guys have obviously worked your way up and made it through a, a horrible system. And all we did was give you some love and, and a job, and you guys ran with it. So you should be really proud of yourselves. You should be proud of yourself for taking that opportunity. Some people are given opportunity and, and yeah. they squander it. Like they don't use it and you, and you did. That's the coolest thing um, about just looking at that hurdle and jumping right on over it. So thank you all so much for being with us. It was so inspiring and you're bringing so much hope to us.